Ann Krieger is the Senior Research Professor of International Economics at John Hopkins University. She's also a professor at Stanford as well. And from 2001 to 2006, she was the first Deputy Managing Director of the IMF. And I asked her, and she told me that the role of the IMF has evolved over time. And the IMF was always intended as sort of the international monetary, as it says, system, and as such was, was not really geared toward developing countries. It was much more geared toward maintenance of the international monetary system. And some of the fund's first big efforts were in the industrial countries not developing. Uh, what's happened is that uh, given that the fund is working toward uh, keeping the international monetary system of, as afloat as it can and so on, uh, the fund has adapted as the international monetary system has grown and changed, including, of course, uh, the increased importance of the emerging markets in developing countries. Do you think they're successful in, in pushing that mandate? Uh, well, look, let me put it this way. I think it's done a lot. I think it's remarkable. It's certainly done more than any other international organization I know of in achieving, except the very specialized ones, in achieving that. But that said, the fund is really the creature of its members. Its members are the countries of the world. And when the countries of the world don't let it or don't want it or don't support it in some of its pushes, it doesn't happen. Ex explain to our, our international audience, they may not know perhaps the particulars of the difference between the World Bank and the IMF and the, the different functions, but in, in most simplistic terms possible, how would you explain to somebody the two roles they have and how do they actually work together? Well, the, the fund is really a short term in its immediate focus in that it's international monetary system. And when countries run into major financial difficulties, the fund can be there to support them. It is not in the development business. It's not long term. Now, things that you do in the short term can be very important for long term growth. So the fund does look at that. But that's a different issue. The World Bank is in the development business and really very much less concerned uh, with the short-term international macroeconomic financial stability. You know, you have a lot of experience. And I want to ask you something that's come up in the last couple of years. The, the agencies, both the IMF and the World Bank, has raised a bit of a, a yellow flag, if you will, regarding the raising of short-term interest rates in the United States. Uh, they've gone on record to say the increase. The IMF and the World Bank like that. Do you think their roles shift to much more policy-driven, or they're trying to influence, perhaps, policies of countries, in this case, the United States, the U.S. Fed? Well, they are both policy driven. I mean, the World Bank can't be concerned with long run growth without being concerned with the policies that, that lead toward it. And the fund, certainly when the country is in short term, there's almost always, if not always, uh, some kind of policy uh, incoherence or something uh, behind it. So in that sense, uh, they, I think they have every reason to be concerned uh, with anything on the international scene that they perceive as something that has spillover effects among countries and that has effects uh, in terms of their growth prospects or their prospects for macroeconomic uh, and financial uh, concerns. Another big topic has been the growth of China. Certainly the time that you were there to where we are today, a lot has changed. And I mean, even at the IMF uh, meetings last year, I mean, that was a huge topic of discussion. What will China's growth be? Where are they with uh, you know, domestic consumption? I mean, there's so many different topics. What is or what should be the IMF and World Bank's role should be when it comes to dealing with a country that's emerging like China? Well, it has been and will continue, I think, to be supportive uh, and helping to foster growth, which does not necessarily mean always agreeing with everything the Chinese authorities do, but it does mean being supportive of their growth initiative. Certainly, the IMF and the World Bank management and staff have pushed for greater say in, in, a, in a formal sense, it already has it informally, uh, China and other emerging markets in the institutions, uh, and that's good. Uh, but China has, of course, become big enough in the past 10, 12, 14 years so that China's large current account surpluses had macroeconomic implications beyond its borders. And that's still, I think, an issue of some concern going forward uh, as to how Chinese low consumption high savings and investment uh, relates to uh, the rest of the world in terms of what that does to international uh, macroeconomic stability and finance. China is a, is a very unique country in the sense that they obviously have their internal political reasons for doing things. And they sometimes listen to the international community as well. And I guess the IMF is a part of that. How much do they listen to the guidance or advice uh, when it comes to reforms financially 
when you think about the IMF and World Bank, how, how big are those words when they come out and speak about China's reforms? Well, first you said China's unusual in that they pay attention to their domestic needs. Everybody pays attention to their domestic needs. It's not unique to China. Um, it's always hard to say for any country, after some reforms are undertaken, how much influence anything not just international, but what the f newspapers did, what the journalists did, what the TV columns did. It's very hard to say uh, what influence there is. I think the Chinese have been uh, very open in listening to uh, what others have to say and, and, and to accepting uh, their viewpoints and quite self-confident that they can decide what they think is best for them. Thank you, Ann Krieger, senior research professor at John Hopkins University and former deputy managing director at the IMF.